Now that bus driving season is over, it's time to get out those snowmobiles. Well, if they've been sitting for more than a year, or maybe two years, you might need to clean the carbs. A lot of people have asked me about that lately. Pretty simple thing to do. If they've been sitting for lots of years, well, it's not that much more difficult. If they've just been sitting for one season, they're probably fine, if they were fine last year. The snowmobile carb looks just like a dirt bike carb for two strokes. There's the old fashioned Tillotson carburetors that have all those layers and diaphragms on the bottom here because they're part of fuel pump too. But more modern sleds like anybody else would want to drive have a separate fuel pump someplace. First thing you might want to do is get your primer working. The system usually dries up and when you pull that knob in and out it's not sucking any fuel. The primer just goes to a pipe and just squirts a little gas in behind the carburetors to the engine. The way I like to do it is just take off the gas cap, put my mouth on the gas tank opening, make sure there's gas in there, blow in there as hard as I can while sealing around my lips so it's not leaking, and then pump this thing up and down until I can see the fuel coming out. If it still doesn't work after that, you've got to make sure that every connection has a hundred percent seal because if it can suck the tiniest bit of air from any point it ain't gonna suck fuel when you start pulling that knob so use little clamps sometimes I even wrap some mechanics wire around these little tiny spots since there's no clamps small enough and pull that tight make sure there's no cracks in the hose because that certainly happens <laughs> by itself no problem when the pipes dry out if you want to guarantee a fast startup if it was working fine last year just squirt some gas in the carb openings. Hold the throttle open a bit. Sometimes all the way, sometimes not at all, and pull it till it starts and dies, and keep doing that a little bit till it pumps and sucks fresh gas to refill up the bowls again. Well, there's the underside of the carb, and many of the carbs, most of them actually, just have a quick remove bowl drain. And there's the main jet right there. This jet only has to do with uh, RPMs that are say over 2,500. The rest of the time it's running on the idle circuit. So that's usually a quarter inch head. You just put a nut driver on it and turn it out and very often you don't even have to take the carb apart or anything. If there's enough cable and pose on everything you can just loosen the clamp here and twist it sideways and work on it. It's very important that that hole is equally clean on both carbs if you have a two carb sled because if one side is running too lean and the other side is running right the other side will force your sled to keep running pretty good and you keep driving it it's gonna melt the crown of your piston ca possibly cause the rings to get melted into the piston uh, score the cylinder it's just gonna run a little a lean running two-stroke runs too hot and also can get less oil because it's a mixed system and that can destroy your engine at least on that one cylinder that is running lean. Never use a drill or anything sharp like that to clean these. The very best thing that works is just get a regular pin that'll that's smaller than that hole and grind the point off of it so it's just got a flat square edge on it. Well the flat square edge is well just imagine my end of my finger flat and square it can catch that dirt and just keep shoving it out once you have that jet taken out in your hand and then hold it up to the light and look through it. Now that I've got the bowl off the carburetor, there's another little tube sticking there, the brass one. That's the little sucking tube that sucks the fuel out of the bottom of the bowl for the idle circuit of the carb. And if you look down below the main jet to that smaller silver hole, you'll see a golden smaller jet in there. And that's the air mixing jet for the idle circuit. The fuel for the idle circuit comes out right around there, right where the throttle is closed. Once the throttle is opened, it runs off the main jet, which is where that needle and brass stack is. So if your snowmobile won't idle properly, but goes fast as hell when you hit the throttle, well, first thing it could be is the idle speed adjustment, which just opens and closes that throttle a certain amount. You want to set both carbs so they have the same gap by adjusting those screws. And the other reason why it might not idle right is green 
gas gunk in there or dirt and debris, who knows what. Maybe even something in that tiny mixing jet. While it's apart, check that this lever moves freely for the needle and seat adjustment. Depending on the style of carburetor, not like this one, when you hold the carburetor upside down like this, it's got the float on there and the floats should be parallel and level with the base of the carburetor. You can adjust that just by bending that little tab above the needle. If it is all gummed up in here, unfortunately that stuff you buy in a spray can called carburetor cleaner and lubricant isn't very good. You can uh, take everything apart and get a little bit of steel wool in there, a screwdriver to start scratching around, add a little gas in there to soften it, but of course the very best stuff is called gunk. It comes in a metal rectangular can, usually. It's uh, extremely smelly, it's extremely corrosive to your skin, it even eats rubber seals and plastic. So be very careful using it and use it outdoors. The smell <laughs> will keep you out of your home. Even if you're wearing rubber gloves, it'll just be a short while before it eats through rubber gloves. So best way is to like hold the carburetor with a pair of pliers, put safety glasses on if you're using that powerful cleaner, and get a toothbrush or a little stiff bristled paintbrush and start brushing everything and cleaning it. And definitely keep the stuff away from your clothes too because it'll stink your clothes up so bad you'll never wear them again. So in all more recent snowbills, they don't have two extra screws. You know, one called H, one called L for high and low. There is no adjustments for mixture. It's all controlled by the size of those two jets. You should never have to change the mixture on your snowmobile if it has, you know, jets that control the mixture unless you've modified the exhaust expansion chamber or removed the silencer or put a higher flowing or put a high flow silencer on so of course your snowmobile would make more noise but then it would have more power but it wouldn't have more power until you jetted it because every time you reduce back pressure on a two stroke or a four stroke you have to increase the jet size a little bit. Never run a snowmobile engine or any two stroke without an exhaust system. It'll just scream and race, lose a lot of torque and possibly burn out your motor. It causes it to run way too lean. You can't get your snowmobile even sucking fuel to the carburetors, no matter how much you pull or what you do. Sometimes those old fuel lines break, break off inside the tank and fall into the bottom. And everything looks like it's connected fine on the outside. So you have to take the cap off and look inside and see if that's what's happened. Sometimes your snowmobile seems to always run out of fuel too soon. Well, you know, you still might even have half a tank. Well, there should be a weighted fuel filter sock thing on the end of one of the hoses and that thing is like a filter and a weight that keeps the fuel line near the bottom of the tank. Sometimes the hose breaks right off where that filter thing is and so the hose can just bounce around in the tank and sometimes start sucking air and sometimes just lift itself up and be above the fuel level when the fuel's not very deep and that's why your snowmobile just keeps running out of gas when it has half a tank. If your machine's been indoors and out of the sun, it's most likely just fine. You don't have to put fresh gas in it or get bleed out all the old gas. Just add, add some fresh gas to the old gas and everything should be good. But being in the sun can cause the gas to go stale really quick, so you may want to change all the gas. Now that everything may be working right, it's a good idea to, if you've been playing with your carburetors to take your sled on a, a drive for maybe five minutes get it all warmed up, pull some good long distance speeds, stuff like that, and then just stop. Bring a spark plug wrench with you or stop back near your shop or garage. Take both spark plugs out or how many there is and compare the colors. They should be a slight tan color. You shouldn't have a tan one or a black one and a white one on the other side. White ones are scary. That's going to tell you very soon you're going to fry that cylinder. Something's too lean. If you start to rev, rev your engine and it starts bogging every time you hit the gas and try to accelerate and it looks like there's a mist of gas spraying backwards out of the carburetor which isn't supposed to happen, that could mean you have a clogged silencer. It's like the muffler tip at the end of your exhaust system. Or it could mean you have cylinder damage and flame and pressure is shooting past a piston and getting into the crankshaft case and blowing stuff back out the carb. Now I'm ready to ride. All I need is some snow. I'm bundled up and ready. Good luck.